Hi everyone, welcome to our video on finding relative extrema when we have a function, and in this case we have a polynomial function. So just as a reminder, from our previous video, when we had a function graphed, the relative max occurred at the peak and, and at the bottom here, and if you had endpoints, well then those could also be considered. Okay, but again, most of the time we usually don't have endpoints, so when we have the graph, that's what we look at. So that means you could graph these and look at them, to, to answer these, if you're allowed to use that calculator, you can plug it all in and we can check. Uh, but let's also show it by hand for some of the trickier ones, possibly that maybe could have misleading graphs, but yeah, most of the time that graphing calculator was very powerful and useful. Okay, so let's take a look at the process. And the process is very similar to looking at the intervals of increasing and decreasing. So though that was from a previous uh, section. So if you are comfortable with those, it's almost identical. So let, let's break it down. So in these problems, let's find the x values of all points where the functions de defined as follows have any relative extrema. Find the values of any relative extrema. Okay, so we're finding the x values and then we're finding the actual relative extrema. Okay, so our first step, is to find the derivative. So f prime of x is equal to 4x cubed minus 16x. And then it's usually best to factor this derivative. So f prime of x is, it looks like 4x is in common, and then x squared minus 4. And then we can see, well, this can, can be factored even further. So f prime of x is 4x times x minus 2 times x plus 2. All right, so we found our factored form. And if you want, you can even put that in parentheses. There we go. So I'm going to cloud this up. We use it for multiple things. We use it immediately, and then we use it again later. Okay, so now that we have the factored form, we set our derivative equal to 0. So 0 is equal to 4x times x minus 2 times x plus 2. And then we set each of these. So if you have a product, that's why we like to factor it. So if you have a product, you can set each of them equal to zero, each part of the product, like that. And then while this, they're all pretty easy to solve, this first one I just need to divide by four, second one I need to add two, the last one I need to subtract one to both sides. Let's show it on both sides. There we go. Okay, and then that way I've got my x is 0, looks like that's 2, and then negative 2, and there we go. Okay, so these are the critical numbers. This is where most likely our maximums and minimums are going to occur. Okay, so now that we have these critical numbers, we're going to go to number 3 here. Step 3 is make that horizontal number line. Again, just like we did with increasing, decreasing. In fact, it's the same exact thing still at this point. So nothing has changed yet. Okay, so the f prime and f. And then I want to plot those. Again, make sure they're in order. So negative 2 would be first, then 0, and then 2. Okay, and I'm trying to space it out well. Okay, and then now we need to test values. So I want to choose, you could start wherever you want. I'm going to choose anything bigger than 2 first. So I'm going to try x equals 10. And remember, this is where we go back to the clouded expression, our f prime, and plug it in because all we want to see is the sign. So if I plug 10 in, f prime of 10 is, well, 4 times 10 is 40. 10 minus 2 is 8. And then 10 plus 2 is 12. And I, and I usually just go ahead and plug it in in one big step here. If you need scratch work or if you need your calculator, that's fine too. And then now that we have this, now I don't care what this actual number is. All we care about is the sign. And so I see 40 times 8 times 12. That would be a positive number. So positive right here. And then now I want to choose something between 0 and 2. So let's do x equals 1. And then I want to find f prime of 1. All right, so if I plug that in, I can see it would be 4 times 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And then 1 plus 2 is 3. And then this, you could, this one's pretty easy to calculate. It is just negative 12. But we know, again, all I care about is the sign, so negative. 
and then keep going with this process. Okay, so x equals negative 1, f prime of negative 1. Plugging that in, I would get negative 4, then negative 3, then positive 1. So negative 4, negative 3, yep. And then I see two negatives would be positive. This is just positive 12. So if it's easy enough, you can go ahead and calculate it. Positive 12, well, again, positive is what's important. And then one last one, if we need to plug in anything left of negative 2, so I usually try to make it easy on myself. You could use negative 3. You could do whatever value you want as long as it's left of negative 2. And when we plug that in, so I would have negative 40 and then negative 12 and then negative 8. And then three negatives would multiply to give me a negative again. Okay, and then that way we can see what's going to happen. It decreases, it increases, then it decreases, and then it increases. And then based on this, we know what we have. Okay, so we've got right here where it decreases, so it, where it changes from decrease to increase. That's a local. Oops, actually, it's used. So I'm using local. Let's use relative. They use that more. So that is a relative minimum right here. So low to high, relative minimum. Right here, high to low would be a relative maximum. And then low to high again, relative minimum. Okay, so we've got that there. So I'm going to do the yellow relative and minimums. And then we have our relative maximum. All right, and so now the fourth thing, we need to plug these. So or, or this was step four. There's actually one more step when we need to find those relative extrema. So um, step five, so one new one. Let's plug these values into the original function. Plug x values into f of x to get relative extrema. Okay, so now it's just going to, I'm going to plug these in. All right, so it's number one. Well, maybe not number one. Let me just do it in like bullets. Okay, so I want to just plug these x values in to my original function. So I want to do f of negative 2 into this. So negative 2 to the 4 minus 8 times negative 2 squared plus 3. And then again, you could use a calculator if needed. Um, it might be easier. Let's see. So 2, 4, 8. So this is 16 uh, minus 32 plus 3. Okay, so that is... Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Okay, so let's speed it up. So instead of me trying to do it all mental math. Okay, so let's go ahead and do two things in one. So I don't want this anymore. Graphing calculator. All right, so let's go ahead and graph this, and we'll, we'll double-check and at the same time get our y-coordinates. Okay, so x to the 4 minus 8x squared plus 3. So this is the, the function that is graphed, and we can see it matches... It matches the the increasing decreasing pattern that we said. So it it starts with going low, so it decreases, then it increases, then it decreases, then it increases, and then this is why the graphs are so powerful. So I mean, I could avoid all of the calculus steps. So if I plug negative two in, it would have been negative thirteen. Okay, so just to get that 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 is it. So that's the negative thirteen. If we were to plug in the zero, now the zero I don't need scratch work for. Uh, zero to the four minus eight to the times zero squared plus three. That would be just three. And then our last one, f of two, would be two to the four minus eight times two squared plus three. So I just wanted to set that up. Um, and this would look like it's 16 minus 32 again plus 3 is also still negative 13. Okay, so that worked out the same as the first one uh, based on those powers. But again, just to quickly check, ne uh, 2 and negative 13 is right there. That one's 0 and 3. Okay, so that's that's our that's our graph. Okay, so this, this shows us, this shows there is the minimum. 
the relative minimum is negative 13. We have another relative minimum of the same value of negative 13. And then we have a relative max of, of three. Okay, so that's why we wanted to evaluate those. Okay, so we knew the relative min occurred at negative two. Let me go ahead and still highlight. And it occurred at positive two. So just to match my colors, there we go. And so now we could formally answer it. So we have uh, the relative minimums. Let's do those, the first ones. So the relative minimum, it's the same value. So that's nice, is negative 13 at x equals negative two and positive two. And then the relative max is this this coordinate this y value 3 at x equals 0 there it is okay so that's that so this was doing it all by calculus okay this was a little bit more useful for us uh, uh, about i don't know 50 years ago before computers could do so much stuff um and then maybe this one this one maybe 10 years ago is when this started to get this powerful okay so anyway so the graph can tell you the answers as well so i, I would say always double check um but it's good practice still for these problems uh, for other scenarios okay so it carries over to other things in math where it's working with derivatives so we'll, we'll usually still have to find derivatives in this class so it's still good practice in getting those and then still good practice solving equations okay so all of this is still good for us in other things even though if this scenario we could say, hey, can I just plug it into a calculator? Well, yeah, yeah, sure. But still make sure you understand everything. Make sure you get the definitions all understood and, and know what they want. All right, well, that is it. Um, for this one, we'll deal with this function in a different video. Um, for now, I'm going to pause it. So uh, we'll see you again next time. And thank you for watching.